don't share your plans. I told people I wanted to do photography, they dissuaded me. I told people they wanted I wanted to do container building, they go, it's not going to work. Mm. They go content, they tell you all the bad things that they think about it. I, I believe you shouldn't tell anyone what you're doing. Go and do it, get into a success, and then people will come and find you. I really wanted to get it right. Good day everyone. This is Darasweto, the most outstanding Yekebu African issues. I don't need pumping a visit my own husband. And anytime you see me on this channel, you already know that it's fun time. But how is it going to be happening today? I have beside me one of the most craziest fellow that flew all the way from UK into Nigeria to come and work in a bank. And after small chickly time like this, he decided to do what? To resign. To start a business in this ecosystem that is called wanted to get it right trying to find some balance in my life i never really put up a fight and now i'm losing sleep what if i lost touch what if i'll never get it right i try to follow my heart but i lost it somehow wish that someone could say Can we meet you, young man? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Setra. It's been it's been amazing. You know, we share so much history. My name is Olao Lua Bamishile. I'm a business administration graduate, uh, and I learned how to build shipping container houses by myself. I mean, this entire process, as you know, we worked in the same place, started a while ago, you know, uh, utilizing all the skills we learned in the bank to, you know, look for a gap in the market and where you can actually slot yourself into and actually stand out in a market like Nigeria that has so much noise. Everybody is trying to do everything. But then um, the idea for all of this was how, how do we do something that stands out immediately? And I'm, I'm very happy by how we've, we've pushed on. But the idea about the whole business was, uh, was to start something or do something that was, that was very niche, but then would, would, would catch the eye. Mm, so true. But the next question I will be asking him, because, you know, I'm speaking the minds of the audience, is that when you know that your interest is in building affordable houses using some materials that we are not even thinking of in this ecosystem. Why did you come to trouble us in the bank? <laughs> I needed to learn first. Of course, you know, before you, before you come into any market, you need to learn how that market works. So having studied outside Nigeria and coming back in, I was fresh, green. Mm. And I have known how those other places work. But then setting up a business in Nigeria is a whole different ballgame. You need to know what they tell you about business. And then you need to know those things that are peculiar to business or doing business in Nigeria. Wow. I somehow seem to agree with you a little bit because when this young man came, I was in the bank with him. They know him for something, and they also know me for something. <laughs> I want to keep quiet. Let's focus on him. So, in a nutshell, uh, what particular year did you discover that this is your major call? I would say it, it was, you were, I was growing into it. That, that, I think that's the main thing. When we're in the bank, I'm sure both of us did not like just working in the bank. We, we, we've had entrepreneurial spirits mm. and we wanted that to flourish so in a way we had a clashing with our jobs didn't we where we had to do your job but they also wanted to do what you liked in the bank it was photography and video for me that's where i started off but then i also found out that i liked to create you know i liked whatever i do i want it to be seen it's tangible and i think that was what brought all of this along having that aspect of it and then having an eye for you know something beautiful Taking something that was nothing and then turning it into something that people would look like almost feels like a model without a makeup. Sorry, girls, but a model without a makeup. And then after all the makeup is done and the, you know, the, the, the photography set is all done, and then you have something that's really polished. You know, taking something from somewhere that people will not look at it to where people would actually look at it. Wow. 
But come to think of it, I know I'm a very good risk taker. Mm. But when I look at your story, I sit back and I ask myself, how do you think in the world, in this world, especially in this place called Nigeria, that is your idea is going to work considering the kind of environment we work in and the fact that this is your trend of uh, real estate, real estate re-engineering is not something that is so common. Well, well, basically, you know, I've seen this before. So I've seen this work in a, in a different country. So when I was studying, I actually saw a shipping container bill. I went into one. I rented one. S stayed there. So in a country like the UK that has hot and cold weather, they, they could engineer this in 2009. That was when I was in school. So we're in 2020 now, and we're just getting to that, to that stage. So when I saw that this could work outside Nigeria, which they have more issues, they have more weather-related issues that would affect the building that we do. It gets hot, it gets cold over there. So I went into one, I rented one, stayed in one, and then I saw that this is an idea here. Now, I know in Nigeria, there's only one option. We don't even build with wood. Mm. We don't even build with metal. We only build predominantly with blocks. And that is a tropics thing. We are in the tropics. It's hot here. The material that we use, it works. There's no, we are not fighting with people that build with blocks. But then what we offer is a different dimension. And that's where we saw where our business could come up in the sense that we can build at a whole lot faster pace than with uh, typical brick and mortar housing. So when I saw that it had worked outside Nigeria, then of course, seeing that it had been done before, doing it here shouldn't be a problem. So I think that was what was, that was, if I hadn't seen it before now, maybe I would have been a bit more skeptical, but because I had seen it work, then it was, it was a, a no-brainer. Okay, so what, what would you consider as the major comparative advantage between building with blocks and building with these uh, containers? This, your question is a tricky one and it's quite loaded. But then I would say, it, uh, many people will probably want to, advantages, the only thing you want to know is price. Which one is, uh -huh. but let's, let's talk about advantages now. Many people, when they're building their houses, they go about it three or four ways. You either build it yourself from ground up, you go and learn how to build, build you supervise it yourself, you go and buy an off-plan, someone builds it for you. Or you call in a developer to build it for you on a JV. Or you just go and buy a ready-made house outright. Now, all of these aspects, all of these types of building, uh, makes it out of reach for most people. Mm. If you buy a house from a developer, he's going to put his money on top. You don't know what, how much money has gone into the house, so you don't know. You're going to pay the premium. If you build it yourself, you need the knowledge to do that. You also need to be there to do it yourself. If you buy an off-plan, it takes time. The off-plans are not ready for 18 to 2 years. Mm. And they might not be ready even after that 18. I mean, that's, sorry, 18 months to 2 years. They might not be that. They might not be ready. So basically, we saw that. Can, can we find a way to build fast? Do you understand? Build fast and deliver quickly. Now, we know that this does not work for every type of building, which is why our business is focused, at least for now, because of how young the market is on commercial spaces. Uh, I'll explain more why later. But then the reason is a commercial space needs to be built now so that it can generate money now. That is that is basically the idea. And this is where containers come in. As, in fact, it helps solve the problem. Oh, I want a shop. I don't know where to rent, but I have a piece of land. Would you rather go and build it for six months without even knowing whether it's going to come, I mean, whether it's going to be a success? Or would you rather, I mean, you have the money, or would you rather build it quickly and see what comes of it. So what we say is that you build quick, and then you can now start to get your money back quickly. But then also building quick hedges you from what is going on in the markets today. Um, I don't know, everyone sees the exchange rate. It's gone really crazy. Crazy. It's gone really crazy. And we can't keep building the way we were building even two years ago. We need to find a way to build faster or just a different way to build faster. And that is where our business, I think, really has the advantage, which is the idea, I mean, which is the ability to move to build fast. Okay. Uh, talking about the ability to build fast, I think I saw one of your slogan and I was like, hmm, are you serious with this? Do you want to hear of it? Please tell me. I heard you say, I will build 
a two-bedroom apartment in 10 weeks? Less than that, actually. Less than 10 weeks? In less than 10 weeks. Hello, world. I think um, <laughs> at this point in time, we really need to listen to him because... <laughs> I'm trying to phantom how you will be able to do that because even even if you are going to build uh, a, a one-bedroom apartment in this country that I am familiar with the terrain, to say 10 weeks, that's that's like promising. Okay, so let me let me give much. you let me give you um, a little scenario. We've just completed a build now around a queer area. It's a two-bedroom build. We designed it and we've completed it in six weeks, fully documented. Six weeks. It was six weeks from start to finish. Everything done, handed over. So we're talking about a building with soccer wheel, borehole, foundation, container building. It has a terrace. Um, finishing work on the outside, you know, landscaping, all of that stuff, all in six weeks. You can't, you can't buy this. Now, within that six-week period, the dollar moved from 650 to 700 naira. Six-weeks period. Now, imagine that were a two-year period. Now, let's take it back. Let's think about the beginning of this year. January of mm. this year, the Nigerian naira to the dollar was about 400, 450, I think. Yeah. As of today, it's 930 naira. I can see you're surprised. I don't think you checked the exchange rate. I've not checked today because... It is 930 naira as of today. Whoa. Yes. And let me tell you, today is Friday. On Monday, it was 750 naira. It is moved by about roughly 200 naira within that time. Now, a whole bunch of factors are, are, are causing this. But then these prices or these changes are still are going to be reflected in the market very soon, mm. which means that everything that is not produced in Nigeria is going to get more expensive, which will capsize into basically everything. Construction, transportation, everything will go up. Mm. So this is where shipping container houses, you know, really comes into play. You can build big, you understand? But you don't really need all that time. You understand? Because the container has already done the work for you. The container already has a floor. It already has walls. Mm. It already has a ceiling. So you don't need that time to start building it from ground up anymore. You can just simply stack your shipping containers and move on to the next thing is doors and glass. That I mean, you, you don't even start thinking about doors and glass for a normal building for maybe about six months to a year. You won't be thinking about it. You're still thinking about putting up block, decking it, putting a roof on it. For a shipping container, once you've stacked your shipping container, all the processes within the shipping container can start at the same time. Whilst for your brick house, you need to wait for one to finish, mm. to dry, mm. for it to go to the other, like that. So that is what makes a shipping container build interesting or something that we should look at a bit more. Plus, now we have a dirt of housing in Nigeria. I'm sure there's some statistics out there that would show you that the government needs to build houses. Presently, we have over 700,000 housing deficits annually in this country, Nigeria. And as far back as 2018, it was documented that Nigeria has over 17.1 million housing deficits. So I think I'm just sitting close to a billionaire here. <laughs> hopefully. Zabilonia. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully it, it turns out like that. You okay. See, that, which is why, which is why there needs to be more options. The, the, the government cannot meet up with building all of these houses. All of these houses can't build themselves. Now, how do you how do you build, I mean, extensively and in large scale? And not over a longer period of time. One of the biggest factors that stops or hinders construction is the availability of funds. How much money there is available to build a house. There is one part of construction nobody talks about. Nobody. They just ask, how much is this house? They don't ask, how much was the labor that's mm -hmm. involved in building the house? So let's look at a construction. If the construction is 100 naira, let's just say the whole construction cost, I want to make it around 100 naira. Out of that 100 naira, your materials will be a certain amount. Your labor will be a certain amount. In Nigeria today, your materials could be 60 to 70% of the cost of the building. Mm -hmm. Your labor could be 30%. In America, it's 50-50. If your materials is 100, your labor is 100, they are charging you double. It's There's no two ways about it. But here we have cheaper labor, which helps us. But then when building a shipping container house, I require less of that labor. 
So for a house that will require 40 people, 50 people to build, laborers and professionals alike, I require eight people. So thinking about it in that, in that mindset, my materials might cost more. The materials to build a shipping container has might cost more. But my labor is way less and my time is way less. If I save on time and I save on labor, I turn out to be cheaper than wow. a typical builder, a brick and mortar house. Now, for, for any housing, the things that go into that house are still the same. You will require tiles in your house. You will require AC. You will require plumbing. You will require electricals, nice fittings. Those are commonplace in any, in any type of building. But then the material that sets up the skeletal, the outside of the building, how it looks on the outside, how it looks on the inside, mm. those are the things that a shipping container will help you with. Because after that, it's still the same thing like building a normal house. Now, my question is this. I am not interested in how to go about building these containers and the likes. Mm. But just like we have the real estate, have you ever considered having like a shopping mall built out of these uh, <laughs> container businesses that people can now come in to buy a space or invest in an open land and say, you know what, two spaces, yes. please, all I want from you is that I am buying a land in uh, Banana Island, I'm buying a land in Lekki Phase 1, Phase 2, Aja. I want you to spaces to take over this property for me in constructing as in strange looking houses. Mm -hmm. When I mean strange looking houses, I mean, I mean houses that can grow mm -hmm. within 10 weeks. Yes, it's something we can definitely do. So what we do as a business is the full value chain. The full value chain will mean that all the way from design to handing you your keys to your already done property. So in view of that, it means that we cover every aspect of the build. We've built offices with shipping containers. We've built supermarkets with shipping containers. We've built restaurants with shipping containers. I've even built a swimming pool with shipping containers. So someone wants to build, I want to develop this land into student accommodation. I'm in Yaba, close to a university. I want to develop this land into a student accommodation. What would you need to start with? A design, just you, like you would a normal house. You need a design. You need that design agreed on by the government. And, I mean, for planning purposes, you need the design to be approved for planning. Once you have those, you can go ahead and build. Your design would, be, would determine what your cost will be. So once you have that in place, then, you know, the, the, the next stage is just to, 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 deploy the, to deploy the building. How well you want to finish it, how well you, you want it to be, will determine what that cost will be. I'm so happy with uh, this discourse, and that's why I want to ask this next question. How can willing investors coming into this your business and by so doing profile solution to this housing deficit that we have in this country, Nigeria to be precise? Okay, so when it comes to housing, I'm sure one of the biggest things you know is housing is, is delays. The most, the biggest thing that is stopping housing from being, apart from availability of funds, is the ones that are even being built are delayed. Delays are because by funds, weather delays, you know, contractor delays, all of those things are issues that happen on projects that are long. So if the project is long, then you will have those problems. With a shipping container build, you're building at such a short period, there is no time for some of those things to crystallize or some of these risks that affect a brick and mortar build to crystallize. So look at it like this as an investor. This is my analogy for investors. How would you rather do it? How would you rather have it? You have 50 million naira to spend today and you want a house. That house must be comfortable, it must be well finished, it must be beautiful. It must be what you want in your mind. You have 50 million, I'm giving you two options to build it with a shipping container or to build it with brick and mortar. With the shipping container build, you'll be done in 10 weeks. You'll 10 weeks. You'll be done in 10 weeks. With the brick, I'm talking about buildings are same size, same amount, same fitting, same everything. With the shipping container, will be done in 10 weeks. Your building will take shape in about one week. That's the entire structure will take shape in one week. If it's a duplex, we can stack it in one day. Your brick and mortar house, you are talking, even if you are building with Julius Beggar, you are talking minimum six months. That's a risk there. If you are building commercial property, that is property that's supposed to generate cash flow, a restaurant, you know, Airbnb, hotel, 
student accommodation. Why? You want to be building it for two years. Does not make sense. It is best that I have 50 million to build a student accommodation or I have 30 million to build a student accommodation and I can build it in 10 weeks and in 11 weeks have the students in there. I think that's a better way to invest our money nowadays. Mm. Also because the rate of inflation has skyrocketed. Whatever investment you're making now, if it's Naira denominated, you are, it's, it's constantly being depreciated. So, and I'm sure almost everybody in Nigeria that is an investor has a Naira investment. So, to, to hedge that risk, the only way to do it is to build it fast and start to collect your money back fast, fast, fast. Because you don't want that investment sitting there and then inflation wiping it. And then you are going further and further into, I mean, your investment is going further and further down, but then you've not broken even. But then if, if, if you can deploy 50 million today and start to get it back, gradually in the next two months or three months, you are way better off than the second man spending that same 50 million, but not knowing when it will finish. And two years time, he hasn't started to collect the money back. So basically, based on everything I've spoken about so far, I believe that our solution is the best or is the next best thing right now. Because if you're not looking to build fast, then you should not build at all right now. That's how I look at it. Our solution provides that and hedges all those risks. So we believe that our solution is the next best thing that would help us, you know, cut down this de this uh, this uh, deficit we have in the market. And it's actually a, a great place for an investor to come because, like I said, investment. Someone that is looking to invest is not just thinking of sinking the money. He's thinking about return on investment and also the time it takes to get that investment back. So another quick analogy. Mr. A, Mr. B have 50 million. Which one would you two choose, investors? Mr. A, Mr. B both have 50 million to spend. Mr. A wants to spend his 50 million and starts to gain it back in 10 weeks. Mr. B spends his 50 million and doesn't gain it back at all for the next two years. Which investment plan would you rather go for? Which one is more attractive to you? The longer one or the shorter one? Please understand <laughs> that we are also in Nigeria. So we cannot, we cannot plan for tomorrow nowadays. So the best thing is to have a solution that hedges you about against all of this. And I believe that it's the next best thing. So um, housing for, for newlyweds, one-bedroom housing, two-bedroom housing, mm. student accommodations, Airbnbs, these are big. The Airbnb one is massive because it's what's really, really blowing up outside Nigeria right now. Airbnbs are being built with shipping containers left, right, and center. And they are making their money back even before they've started to, mm -hmm. to rent it out because of just how quick it is. You understand? Nowadays, you, you, you don't have a proposition of give me your money for your house. It, it is unheard of. Give me 40 million. I'm moving in 10 weeks. I think people think it's magic. I think it's magic. In today's real estate in Nigeria, it's magic. Magic and it's crazy. Magic. But we can do that magic. Wow. Wow. So wow. investors, you're welcome. Anybody that wants to because... I also want people to understand. People don't understand the engineering behind the shipping container. The reason why someone will go for a block house is because they think, I understand what a block house is. I don't understand what a shipping container house is. Uh, I want to assure everyone that building technology has moved so far that building with some of the materials that we do gives you a better feel than your block house, if you can understand. One of the big misconceptions is that a shipping container house will get hot because it's made out of metal. But like I said earlier on, our shipping container houses conform to the norms. What is the norm? A normal house. So our shipping container houses, we make them look like a normal house. We also have things in the shipping container house called insulation. Now, because we're in Nigeria, many people don't know what insulation is. Many people don't even, because we don't use it here in Nigeria. It's, it's not utilized here. But then we, we utilize them in our bills to give you a better, it, it makes the house even more comfortable than your typical brick and mortar house because of the level of insulation that's inside the building. The building is engineered to, to, to keep it like a fridge. You know when you turn on your fridge and you turn it off, it remains cool inside. Your block does that. Our shipping container houses also do that. So the engineering around it is sound. We've done this on so many occasions, but then the, the one difference is just that time. And everybody knows time is money. Wow. We can go on and on, but at this point, 
I want to ask a very selfish question. You know, I run a foundation in which I try to empower the less privileged African youth. Um, we train them in numerous crafts and the likes. We pay for their trainings here and there. But there is this challenge of housing. We have some of them staying very far away from the foundation space. So depending on how you choose to build it, if you are choosing a standalone build, that is, it's one structure up, that will probably take a bit more time. Because like I said, some processes will need to wait before others can go on. But let's say you're building it like a camp. Do you remember how our school, where you can have one house, each individual mm -hmm. place? That would be a whole lot shorter. Do you understand? That would be a whole lot shorter time. So it depends on what you're building and the scale of what you're building. What I can tell you is that the timelines for building a shipping container house are 80% less than a typical brick and mortar build. You don't require the amount of foundation you require for a typical brick and mortar build. The foundations are about 60% less. You require less foundations, less materials going into the foundations. Mm -hmm. That is also a part of the construction that takes time. So since you require less of those, it, it, you can easily speed up the build. Look at our constructions nowadays. Have you ever noticed the shape of a house? All houses are either a square or a rectangle. Mm. And that's the same thing with a shipping container. Mm. So once you have a design in mind, you stack it the way you want it to be. All you have to do is just start to kit up what's on the inside. Now, the shipping container body on the outside can be left open if you want to. Some people like that design aesthetic. But all in all, in general, kitting out the shipping container space will take you 80% less time than it would a typical brick and mortar build. I mean, and I'm saying brick, building it from ground up. So um, to answer your question, it, it definitely will depend on the scale of what you are building, how big it is. But just know that whatever you're building, if you're comparing it with, you'll be saving a whole lot more time. Wow, this is highly informative. And I think I'm beginning to picture how the student hostel for the foundation will be. I'm so happy being on the couch with you yes, tonight. Yes. And for those of you that are watching from home, let me just give you a little bit. You know, we're just forming, bringing out the <laughs> lyrics of English from our mouth. This young man that you are seeing here, we worked at the same bank. And um, while he was specializing in photography, I was specializing in fashion graphic. <laughs> I was into fashion. I was, I was running crazy with the world of fashion for both male and female while I was in the banking sector then. While he was always running around with cameras and the likes. And I'm so happy to find out that uh, he's doing great now. After res uh, resigning yes. into this, of which at the age of 35, I retired from the bank to do what I'm doing. And would you say you have ever regretted resigning from the bank? I wouldn't say that. I think it's uh, it was it was always going to be a means to an end. Yeah. I think everything we do, we, we have to keep learning on a day-to-day basis. We, I worked in so many different departments in the bank. And I'm sure some of the experiences that we picked up there is helping, now. Is helping nowadays. It's you helping never now. stop learning. I mean, you learn every day. So I believe that it was the end of that era, the end of that stage, and it was time to to move on. Yeah, you, you know, you left before I did. <laughs> I was I was envious, <laughs> you know, before I could take the leap and take the because it's always it's, it's always. I know this one. So when I said, "Oh, uh, uh, I'm retiring, early retirement from the banking sector," they were like, "Are you?" Are you okay? Are you crazy? <laughs> and I'm I mean, sure they would have said the same thing. Of course, because leaving you a bank job, you know, a bank job is probably one of the more higher paying jobs in Nigeria nowadays. Leaving that to go and do your thing, it's a daunting task. I mean, you'll get family members telling you also, are, are you sure you want to do this? Mm. So, you know, I had all of that myself. But then once you're sure about yourself and, you know, you've done your homework, set up your business right now, I think there's, there's not anything anyone can do. I've seen people leave oil company jobs to go and do their own business. Mm. I, I even think that would have even been much harder for me because they get so much more money. But yes, I think that, you know, it, it's been amazing. The bank was amazing. They taught us so much. So much, so much. So much. And then they made yeah. us better persons yes. that we can always refer to mm. their influence of in course, the way course. we do, we of transact course. business now. So in, in to end this, what would be your advice to the youth? Um, you see, when I, when I, when I started this, you know, I'm, I'm a product of teaching yourself. Photography, I taught myself. You know, I did 
you go to school, you do all of that. But then what you do in school might not be what you actually mm. enjoy. So True. try and teach yourself. Find out what it is that you enjoy. There, there, there is nothing like doing something, waking up to do something you don't enjoy every day. You are never going to be a success at it. That's, for me, that's what I've learned. If you can't wake up and be smiling that you're going to go and do something, you should stop that thing and stop it today. But then, how do you learn something else? Mm. I believe that all the information is out there. You understand? I learned construction on YouTube without a teacher, a professor, without mm. four years in university. You understand? I learned it. I, I can do it at least to a certain level that is good enough. I believe that anything it is that you want to do, you shouldn't procrastinate. You should just, you should just go and do it. Yeah. And, and don't talk to anybody about it. That's something else I like to say. Don't, don't tell anybody. Don't share your plans. Mm. Don't do anything. Don't share your plans. I told people I wanted to do photography. They dissuaded me. I told people they wanted, I wanted to do container building. They go, it's not going to work. Mm. They go, they tell you all the bad things that they think about it. I, I believe you shouldn't tell anyone what you're doing. Go and do it. Get into a success. And then people will come and find you. <laughs> you have listened to him. You've heard that. And that is what I call fantastic. So if you are there as a youth... These are the kind of role model we need in Africa. These are the kind of people we need to listen to and pick up from where they actually, like say, where you actually are, are presently because where he is presently might just be your own starting point. And to those investors out there, you know what? Don't let us talk too much. See the number below. Call us and let us build you a home. A home that you will look at and you say, this is home from above. So with that being said, it's nice it was meeting having you. A chat with you. Yeah. So <laughs> till next time, Dio Cetro signing out.